Okay, so by now each of you have um, put together your small, short, you know, 10 to 15 second video on cyborg relations and gotten some feedback on that from me. And so now we are moving on. We've done a lot of um, small assignments leading up to this big final transmedia assignment with video and essay. This is your big final project. This is worth 25% of your grade. And because it's such a big project, um, I've gone ahead and broken it down into manageable chunks that we're going to be working on over the next three weeks. So first of all, this week, um, you'll see here at the top of the assignment, this is on our Moodle site, that there are four due dates. Um, first, your draft video is due a draft of your video, and this should be a good draft. This should not just be some, you know, piece of crap that you flung together at the last minute. Your draft video, you want it to be as good as possible because the better that you make it, the more specific feedback I can give you that will help you to have a, um, a, a fantastic final project. Um, so this is due April 9th at 11.55 p.m. this Sunday. And then the following week, you will be drew a draft of your paper. Again, the draft of your paper should be as good as it can be. Think about your drafts as your finals. The better you make your drafts, the better your grade is going to be in the end. And if you make your drafts, you know, fantastic, that will save you a lot of time um, in revising. So, you know, it might be that you turn in a draft video and I say, that's fabulous, you're done. Or you turn in a draft paper and I say, that's fabulous, you're done. Then you have a whole week off. So don't, um, don't treat these drafts as opportunities for you to just sort of fake it. Do the best that you can. And I will give you feedback. Um, and then your final video and paper are due Thursday, April 20th by 11.55 p.m. And then voting um, on the Academy Awards is due Sunday, April 23rd by 11.55 p.m. So basically the draft of the video, how much each of these is worth, is broken down as such. The entire project is worth 250 points or, um, you know, 25% of your final grade. Oops, sorry. And the draft of the video, you automatically get 20 points if you turn that in. The draft of the paper, you automatically get 20 points if you turn that in. Um, your final new media video that you turn in is worth up to 100 points, depending on the quality of the product that you turn in. And your final reflective essay um, is also worth 100 points possible, depending on the quality of the product that you turn in. There will be also then three days where each of you will vote on the video submission. So what you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to view each other's videos that we've linked to our WordPress website and then um, vote. And all this will be explained in more detail later. Again, if you do the voting, you automatically earn 10 points and you should email it to my email address, which is right there. So here's the assignment. Um, and I always read through the assignments just to make sure that I'm doing the most that I can to make sure that you actually read or hear at least every single word that's in this assignment at least once. But you should be reading and rereading this and rereading it um, as you go through the process just to make sure that you hit all of the points. So if you have any questions about the assignment, please do post them to the forum. And I will answer your questions there. So. For this assignment, you are creating a 90 to 120 seconds, that's one and a half to two minute um, blog video, either to A, reflect on or tell a story about some technology particularly relevant to the 21st century, or B, instruct your audience on how to create something. So these are just some general ideas. Um, I like these, these particular topics because um, I want you to keep thinking about technology that's particularly relevant to the 21st century. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be computers or smartphones or something like that. Um, you know, you can think broadly about technology the way that McLuhan encourages us to think broadly about technology. You could think about, and, and when you're trying to think about what's particular to the 21st century, just try to think of something that did not exist before the year 2000. So it could be a GoPro. It could be, um, you know, a particular kind of skinny jeans that you're in love with. It could be this obsession with contouring that we have um, with makeup. It could be a 
brand new kind of baseball, I don't know, I'm not in the sports, um, that didn't exist before the year 2000. Um, it could be, I don't know, it could be anything. Just think of technology broadly and something that didn't exist before the year 2000. Now, um, also we need to be instructor, other option, instruct your audience on how to create something. These how-to videos are really popular in the 21st century. They are popping up on my feed all of the time, uh, my social media feeds. And uh, one of the things that, again, that we think about with the internet is that it helps us figure out how to do things. And what those things are, um, or could be, is wide ranging. There's a lot of stuff out there that we don't know how to necessarily do. Our parents didn't teach us, our friends don't know how to do something. And so we turn to the internet to see what we can learn. Um, so think you could think about that broadly. Okay. Now, remember that we've been reading over the course of the semester in our chapters how to develop good narratives. You know, for example, there should be tension. That there usually follows three acts. Um, even in something as short as 90 seconds to 120 seconds, you're going to want to have some exposition where you introduce, you know, whatever it is that you're talking to or talking about um, and then have some sort of conflict in the middle that then gets resolved by the end. And, you know, that conflict could be how to make a tomato tart um, or something. You know, how do we do this? We're going to make a tomato tart. How do we do this? Here's the tension. These are the things you should avoid. This is what your final product looks like. Um, so, for this project, you will be the cinematographer, editor, prop manager, voiceover artist, and actor. You must appear in the video at some point. Now, um, I, this always strikes fear into law students' hearts, but I swear you'll be okay. Um, you can appear in the video as little or as much as you want, but you do have to appear into it, in it at some point. So you will need to think about how sight, motion, and or sound affect perception and compose a meaningful project that conveys the significance of your narrative based on the way you stage shots and record audio. You may not use video shot by someone else, um, but you may include music composed by another person. Your final video must be edited. This is important. You are not allowed to just turn in something that has continuous unedited footage. So keep in mind that unedited footage is often quite dull. This is usually why a lot of our family videos can be quite boring. So you need to be prepared before you shoot and reconciled about having to record several takes before you accomplish one you are proud of. Um, I have put the storyboard template up on our Moodle website underneath this week so that um, you can go and download that and really start planning out your um, your video. There's also in my next video on chapter 11 we're going to be talking a lot about the plans that you can make for a project because um, if you just decide you're going to do something willy-nilly it's not going to turn out to be very good. So there are some steps in our assigned reading for this week that will help you out a lot as you go along. So today we no longer need a lot of fancy equipment. I suggest iMovie for Mac users and VSDC video editor for PC users. But there are tons of video editing apps out there that are easy to use on smartphones, tablets, YouTube, etc. Feel free to play around and find one you like. So, that is an overview of the essay project. Oh, I'm sorry, the video project. For the essay, you will also be turning in a Word document answering the questions below in bullet form. Note, you must use complete sentences and write complete paragraphs for each bullet point. I cannot stress this enough. I like the idea of um, this particular essay being written in bullet form, but nevertheless, I don't want you to think bullets. That means incomplete sentences. That means I don't need to explain myself. No, that is not good. So I give you this advice here. You should also loosely follow this format within paragraph, within each paragraph. I chose to do A, B, or C because it's significant for X, Y, Z reasons show off the knowledge that you've gained this semester. This is a final project, and so you should treat it like, um, you know, a, a research project, a final exam, uh, the time where you really get to show off what you've learned, okay? 
So here are the eight questions you're going to be asked to answer. Um, if this video were to be part of a transmedia project, what two or more other platforms would you use to flesh out the project and encourage interaction? What is enticing about your rabbit hole? What is your story world, theme, genre, audience, and demographics? What are your budgetary restrictions? All of this is discussed and explained in detail in our textbook, Digital Storytelling. So again, make sure you go back, review the chapters, and um, think about the examples that she provides. And she prov Miller provides a lot of examples that will help you to think about common problems that people fall into when they don't really flesh out their story world, their theme, their genre, their audience, their demographics, and their budgetary restrictions. Um, don't just say, I'm going to throw this up on YouTube because it's free and that's easy and uh, teenagers like it. That is not an adequate answer. So, number four, what cheese holes do you, do you think would interest your viewers? Again, you're going to need to be thoughtful, original, come up with some really good examples, not only of what cheese hole you would use, but the specific steps your audience would have to go through in order to um, really enjoy and interact with these cheese holes. Number five, what special tools or apps did you use to complete this project? Again, don't just list them. List, you know, identify the tools and the apps you use and explain why you chose them and also what seemed to work well with them or what you did not like about them. You need to be thoughtful on every single one of these questions. Um, number six, how hard were these apps to learn on your own? What tutorials did you take advantage of? Again, walk me through your process. Write a complete paragraph. Don't just blow this off. So seven, what editing techniques did you use and why? Again, you're going to need to go back, refer to our editing terminology and say, I use this type of establishing shot. I use this type of reestablishing shot. I put together a point of view shot for these reasons, because I wanted to communicate X, Y, or Z. I used a jump shot. Remember, jump shots are one of the most frequently misused terms. Um, so make sure you understand what a jump shot is if you're going to say that you used a jump shot. Number eight, if you were going to redo this video again in the future, what would you do differently or want to learn? In other words, in order to create a successful um, project. So you should write eight complete paragraphs. In order to get eight complete paragraphs um, answered fully, you should be planning to write somewhere between um, probably five and seven pages for this paper, okay? So if you type up one page and you're like, I'm done, you're not. Go back. <laughs> you know, maybe you can accomplish it in four pages, um, but you're probably going to be in the range of five to seven pages, okay? So here I have the complete instructions for what you need to do in order to upload your draft video. Now again, remember, the draft video, you turn that in, it's automatically you get 20 points for turning it in, and I will give you feedback. This will help you. Try to make the best video you can. Here are instructions for uploading your draft paper. Um, again, write the best paper you can. That way I can give you the best feedback. That way you will get the strongest, highest grade you can on your final video and paper that you turn in. And then finally, um, oh, sorry, not finally, thirdly, here are the instructions for uploading your final video and paper, what I expect you to do and how you are to turn it in. And then, and then finally, instructions for voting. So um, our voting, what I always like to do this at the end of the semester where um, everybody watches each other's videos we usually do this in person in an on-site class, but because this is an online class, you can do it at your leisure. Um, and then you will vote for the best entry for mise-en-scene. So whose who's video had the best costume, decor, setting, lighting, etc. Um, who had the best cinematography? Who, in other words, put the most thought into how they were framing um, each individual shot, or etc. Um, who had the best editing, whose editing was the smoothest and, you know, made use of all different terminology, um, whose video had the best soundtrack, and then, and then finally, best overall video. 
Now note here, you may not vote for yourself. Anyone who votes for themselves, I will just automatically toss out those votes, okay? 